I'm a psychiatric nurse who started out working in a residential mental health hospital. One of our patients was an elective mute, which means he couldn't speak for no medical reason. He had talked previously and appeared pretty normal, except for being about seven feet tall. He was raised in the Deep South and entered the military at 19, but one night he disappeared. He was considered AWOL and then missing and dead. Ten years later, a seven-foot-tall man strolled into a VA hospital emergency room in my section of the Midwest and told the receptionist, My name is Marion Duchene. Not his real name. And I've been dead for ten years. These were the last words he ever said. He was coated in dust and dressed in the exact clothing he had been seen wearing the night he went missing. His social security number was not used and he had no identification. However, I believe they were able to identify him using fingerprints. The family was notified, but they stated that they had already mourned their departed man and that whoever claimed to be him simply could not be. They insisted on not being contacted again. Marion marched all day, every day, moving his mouth in a manner that resembled talking or murmuring, but no sound came out. He had an unsettling habit of throwing his head back, mouth wide open, as if he were laughing hard, yet no breath could be heard. He seemed to listen if I spoke to him, occasionally flinging his head back in that laughter-like motion. Several drugs were tested, but none of them had a beneficial or bad effect on him. Occupational therapy was ineffective because Marion would simply grin and pace until instructed to stop. The last thing I saw on my last day at work was Marion pacing in the parking lot, tossing his head back to laugh. Later, I wondered whether I'd always been dealing with a ghost. All these years later, I still don't know. This is a story about the terrible events that occurred after I moved into a house eight years ago. The house was far from town, right at the bottom of the mountain. Perhaps that's why it was said that the house had been empty for quite a long time. Although this fact was a bit unpleasant to me, I was swayed by the very low price and signed the contract. However, after I entered the house, two police officers came the next day. They spoke to me with serious expressions. Did you know that many of the people who previously lived in this house are missing? I'm guessing it was probably done by wild animals that came down the mountain behind here. Do you have to live in this house? I smiled, pointing to my German shepherd in the yard. Don't worry, that guy is a professional hunter of wild animals. <laughs> but they didn't laugh at my joke. They walked around the house a few times and then left. A few days later, while I was watching TV, my dog suddenly started barking in the yard. Then he cried out, but there was a loud thud, and after that I couldn't hear him anymore. I was so shocked that I ran into the front yard, but I couldn't see my dog. His leash was broken, and there was a lot of loose dirt all over the yard and there was a deep hole in the ground in one part of the yard. It felt like my dog might have fallen into that hole, but I was so confused because there was no such hole in the yard until the day before. I walked up close to the hole and looked inside with a flashlight, but it was so deep that I couldn't see the bottom. There was debris flying around in the air as if something had just fallen into a hole. I was in shock and was wondering what to do once I got inside when I heard my dog whining outside again. But this time, the sound seemed to be very far away. I ran out into the yard again, but there was nothing in sight. I kept an eye on the hole in the front yard every day from that day on, and sometimes I heard faint vibrations coming from the ground, but I couldn't tell if it was real or my imagination. Then a few days later, I got a call from my friend Jack. He said he would come visit and see my new house. I told him to come on a different day, but he said he was already on his way. A few hours later, he arrived and I heard his voice calling me from outside the front door. I went to the front door and opened the door, but Jack wasn't there. I was flustered because I definitely heard Jack's voice. Was I hallucinating? I looked at my phone. There was a message from Jack. What is this hole in your yard? There's something moving in the hole. It was a message from five minutes ago. I walked to the front yard and I was shocked. The hole in the front yard was bigger than before and there were human footprints around the hole and they seemed to be Jack's footprints. I got closer and saw the hole. The hole was big enough for a person to fall into. 
I looked down into the hole, but it was so deep that all I could see was darkness. I screamed into the hole. Jack, are you down there? But there was nothing. I slammed my fist into the ground, wondering if I was dreaming. My fist throbbed with pain. I got my phone out and called Jack. At first, I thought his phone was ringing from deep inside the hole, but after a moment, it felt like maybe it was just a sound created by my imagination. He didn't answer the phone. I reported what happened to the police. The police said they could not search inside the hole because it was too deep. The next day, Jack still could not be contacted and his family reported him missing. I finally decided that I had to look inside the hole myself, so I attached a small light to a GoPro camera, tied a string to it, and lowered the camera into the hole. After lowering it for a while, I felt the camera hit the bottom, and so I started lifting it back out. Once I had it out, I tried playing back the video. The hole was extremely deep and there were countless holes going in various directions within it. I could hear the sound of something moving inside the hole, but I couldn't see anything moving in the video. A few days later, I woke up in the middle of the night to a strange noise. It was a sound coming from the yard, as if a car was moving and its tires were scraping against the ground. But it was a more bizarre sound than that. I went to the front door and looked out the window, and then I saw something shocking. Something large and purple had slipped into a hole in the front yard. It looked like a snake, but it was huge. It also had an incredibly large head. Of course, I had just woken up, and since I saw it only for a split second, it could have been an illusion. I wanted to go out to the hole and take a closer look, but I was so scared that I couldn't muster the courage to do it. I contacted the police again, but they just said I was overly stressed and should get some rest. This whole situation was scary and made me feel crazy, so I decided that I would have to move somewhere else and eventually started packing. But a few days later, I was shocked to find that the hole in the yard was filled with dirt. But I hadn't hired anyone to fill the hole with dirt and there was no dirt nearby to use. I continued to feel panicked and swiftly moved out. A few months later, I got a call from someone who wanted to buy the house. I explained to him what had happened and told him that it was a very dangerous house. But he laughed and said if such a large mole appeared, he would catch it and eat it himself. I kept trying to convince him that it wasn't a mole, but he wouldn't listen to me. So I sold it to him and he moved into the house. About a month later, he disappeared. According to the police, before he went missing, he called 911 and shouted, What the hell is this? Is there an animal like this in the world? Almost 20 feet long. It's so fast. It came right up in front of me. Ah! The police arrived 20 minutes later, but the only thing they found was a large hole in the yard. The man was nowhere to be found. What on earth is going on in that yard? This is a true story that happened to my uncle. My uncle is a security guard at a hospital. He is a night shifter. My uncle is a well-built man and is brave, so working the night shift is not a problem for him. One day, at around 3.20 a.m., an elderly woman walked up to the hospital door and my uncle immediately helped her. He asked what the problem was, and the woman said that she could not breathe. My uncle went and grabbed a wheelchair so that it would be easier for the old woman to get around the hospital. He got back with the wheelchair and was about to give it to the woman but she was gone. My uncle was startled. She was in no shape to be moving around. He went and looked for the woman, but she was nowhere to be found. They then checked the CCTV footage and there it was, my uncle talking to nobody. My uncle's face was seen confused and scared on the footage. His coworkers could tell that he wasn't lying at all because on the footage, it was seen that the automatic door opened meaning it detected someone entering the building, but no one was there when they checked the CCTV. My uncle described the old woman's appearance, saying that she had curly short hair and was wearing a white blouse and a white knee-length skirt. She was also wearing white slippers. His descriptions perfectly matched an old woman who had died the same day in that same hospital, according to one nurse. A shaman once told my uncle that he has a very strong third eye, meaning he has the ability to see things that are not visible to most human beings. 
My uncle is still a security guard to this day, but now he has trust issues when accommodating patients, often wondering whether or not they are actually alive. This experience happened to me when I was around seven or eight years old. My sister has her own room while my little brother and I share a room with a bunk bed and my little brother sleeps on top. I often go to bed at 3 a.m. after playing and watching movies. So around 3 a.m. in the morning, I go to my room and go to sleep. When the light is off in the room, you can't see anything, but I actually like that because I can sleep better. As I was falling asleep, I felt my brother coming down from the top bunk, but then went back up immediately. I was surprised because he usually uses the bathroom when he climbs down during the night. But I thought maybe he changed his mind about going to the bathroom, so he went back up, so I didn't pay attention. After a while, I heard some scratching noises, like the wall was being scratched. I got annoyed, so I kicked the bottom of the top bunk. He stopped, but seemed to hold back his laughter, and I asked, why are you laughing? When I said that, he lowered his head and peered at me. In the darkness, I couldn't see his face, but I could see he was staring at me. I thought he was just trying to scare me, so I just stared back at him. Eventually, my eyes adjusted to the darkness so I could see him little by little. But before I could see his face completely, he moved and lay back down again. The only thing I noticed when my eyes adjusted was that he was laughing. He was smiling with his mouth open because I immediately saw his teeth. At that time, I honestly was frightened and scared because my brother would also be scared and it was weird for him to do that at 3 a.m. in the morning. I didn't pay attention and just covered my eyes with my arm while trying to sleep. While I was sleeping, someone called out to me. The voice was calling me by my first name. When I heard my name, I was horrified and couldn't breathe because my youngest brother always calls me brother. I didn't answer and I pretended that I was asleep. After that, the whole night, it was like someone was scratching at the top of the bunk bed and I could feel the shaking. The scratching was so hard and violent. I don't know what part of his body he was scratching, but I can imagine that his skin was getting torn up because of how intense the sound was. I eventually fell back asleep because I was tired from staying up all night and later woke up around 10 a.m. I looked at the top bunk, but my youngest brother was not there. I immediately went downstairs. I saw that he was getting ready for school, but he was just watching YouTube like nothing had happened. I smacked him on the shoulder and said, you're so lame for scaring me last night. He got confused and said that he was sleeping in our sister's room. It turns out that that night, my sister didn't come home and slept at her boyfriend's house. After this incident, our room was just used as a storage room and my brother and I slept downstairs. We put a cross on the door of that room, but there are times when the cross tilts to the side, so we put it back in its original position. But it just keeps getting tilted. We consulted a priest and the priest only told us not to let the cross turn upside down completely, or else the entity will follow us for eternity. This incident happened to me before I moved to the U.S. I'm from a beautiful city called Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. When I was around 12 years old, we moved to a new apartment. It was bigger than our previous one. It had three bedrooms and I was so happy I finally got my own personal room. But I also loved my parents' room because they got a huge window with a beautiful view of the city. When you look out the window, you can see other apartments in a building. And there was one right across from ours. Just for the view, I would always go to my parents' room in the evening after school. I would stand there, mesmerized by the view and tall buildings. But one day, while looking out the window, my eyes suddenly noticed a girl in the building across from us. She was waving at me, and I thought to myself that she looked pretty and nice. I assumed she must be around my age. She was wearing a red frock dress and a headband with a bow on top. We would wave to each other from across the way every evening for a couple months but we never met outside of our apartments. One day, we had guests come over, and I was sitting next to my mom while one of the ladies told my mom, Someone finally bought that apartment. My mom replied, asking, Which one? And the lady said it was the one across from my parents' bedroom. She said that apartment had been available for over a year. But I told her, No, there is a family living there. I've seen the girl who lives there. My mom's friend giggled and said, Good joke. I knew what I had seen, 
so I was so furious, and I yelled, I'm not joking. There's a girl that waves to me every day. She's around my age. Finally, the lady looked at me seriously and said, Dear, maybe you were hallucinating, because I'm sure that no one has lived there for over a year, and no one can enter that house. It's locked up tight, and there's a security guard. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I just sat there, completely frozen. Hi, I'm Gianna. People often call me Gia. When I was studying at university, I was living in an apartment in the city to study at college, and my apartment was on the third floor of a building. The apartment was rather small, only big enough for me and my cat in my room, and there was a small balcony outside. I put a curtain up, since I was worried that someone could see me through the glass door. I also didn't let my cat out on the balcony, because I didn't want him to jump down and run away. Late one night, I was studying my room when the door of my room opened by itself. I didn't pay much attention to it. I assumed it was just my cat, and I was very focused on studying for my upcoming exam. After a few minutes, I heard my cat meow from the living room. It was so strange, because I knew he was in my room, and I didn't think he went back out. So I got up and looked in the living room, and there was my cat. It was sitting next to its food plate. I must have forgotten to give him food. So I poured out his food, but then a cat meowed from my room. The meow sounded strange, and I was terrified to look. There's no way something could be in there, I thought to myself. I slowly peeked into my room and saw a strange, creepy-looking man making the same sound as my cat. I was so scared that I took my cat and ran out of the apartment. Once I got out of the building, I looked up at my balcony and saw the guy just staring at me with his eyes wide and an angry look on his face. I ran and ran for what felt like hours, until I eventually went back to the building and told my landlord about what happened. We called the police, and they caught the man inside my apartment. I never went back to that apartment ever again. My name is Catalin, and I'm going to tell you a real creepy story. This was back in 2016. I was in the ninth grade, and after I finished my classes, I left to start going home. My home is like 40 to 50 minutes away from the high school, so I needed to take the trolley for a couple of stations. When I was waiting for the trolley, there was a man close to me and he was waiting as well for the trolley to come. I had seen him a couple of times already at that point. He needed help. He would scream loudly in the station, so I was pretty scared to get too close to him. After I got in the trolley, I saw the guy watching me, smiling at me, and creeping closer. I got scared, but I just ignored him by staying on my phone and scrolling. I thought that would be enough to make him mind his own business, but it didn't work. When I got out of the trolley, he also got off. This was when things really got scary. On my way home, there is this path that I usually go down through a park. The guy followed me, was close behind me, and then he tried to talk to me. My phone was literally dying at like 2-3% to battery life. I got so scared, the park was pretty empty at that time. Not so many people were around, so I just kept minding my own business and trying to get home. At around the exit of the park, the guy said to me, Hey, wanna come for a little walk on the bridge? I got something for you. As he said this, he had both of his hands in his pockets. I was so panicked. I told him, Sorry, but I need to go home. My dad is waiting. He then went silent and I ran to my house as fast as I could. After I got to my apartment, I tried to look back to see if the guy was still there or trying to catch me, but no one was there. The guy had literally vanished. I was thinking, what if the guy saw where I lived and will wait outside for me until the next day? Luckily, I never saw him again and I felt so relieved. I wonder, what would have happened to me if I accepted his offer to go on the bridge and he showed me his surprise? This happened to me when I was six years old while I was living in my hometown in Japan. I was playing in my front yard when I heard a voice that sounded like an elderly lady. I turned around and noticed a woman in her early 20s. She wore a red dress with a white turtleneck underneath and her hair was black, bob cut with brown eyes and a mole near her lip. She asked if my mother, Kay, was home. 
I assumed she was one of my mother's friends who I hadn't met yet. I told her that my mother was not home and that she should come back later. Before she left, I asked her what her name was. She told me her name was Yuka, and then she left as I watched her walk away from home. Since it was starting to get a little dark, I headed inside for a while, playing on my Nintendo DS. Then, my aunt came home from work, but my mom wasn't home either. I dismissed it as my mother doing extra shopping before returning home, as she often did. Then I remembered Yuka from earlier. In the kitchen, I approached my aunt and asked, Ritsuko, who is Yuka? My aunt froze, dropping the thermos she was holding and letting it hit the floor. My aunt looked at me with fearful eyes. She dashed out of the kitchen with an unframed photograph of four girls, my mother, my two aunts, and Yuka. My aunt pointed at the girl who turned out to be Yuka in the same clothes from earlier. Is this the Yuka you're talking about? My aunt asked me frantically. When I said yes, my aunt began to cry. I didn't know why she was crying, so I asked. She told me that Yuka was a close friend of my mother and aunt's because they attended middle school and graduated from high school together. It turns out that Yuka died when I was two years old. I was scared and shocked at the same time, and my aunt was crying as she held me. I was shocked, and to this day, I still believe I saw a ghost. Hi, I'm Leo. The story I'm about to tell you happened to me when I was 18. It was the last week of November. I received my grade report and found out that I had just completed my senior year of high school. Since I was no longer required to go to classes, I decided to take my vacation early. One day, my mother, who at the time was working as a teacher at a children's school, came to ask me if I could go with her to help assemble the materials for an event that was going to take place there. Since I hadn't scheduled anything to do yet, I said I could. She left for work at 7 a.m., and as she knew that I was a very heavy sleeper, we agreed that I would go there myself once I woke up. The night before the event, I went to sleep at 1 a.m. I had a weird dream that night. In my dream, I was walking down a deserted street. There was no one walking and no cars passing by. Suddenly, a yellow van passed me and parked a few meters in front of me. I was unbothered and kept walking. But as I walked past it, the door bursts open and someone pulls me into the van, then closes the door and the van starts to accelerate. Inside, it was completely dark and empty, but I could see two people with me. One was holding me very tightly with her hands covering my mouth, while the other was at my side. Both wore black clothes and masks covering their faces so I couldn't identify them. Then, the person next to me takes a syringe out of her pocket and injects something into me, and the dream turns completely black. It stays black for a few seconds, and then I start seeing in the dream again. I realize that I was in a very small room and that I was strapped to a gurney. In front of me, there was a very old lady sitting in a chair staring at the floor. If I couldn't hear her heavy breathing, I would have thought she was a statue. I was also paralyzed. I couldn't turn my head, I couldn't move my body, I couldn't speak. The only things I could do was blink and listen. Some time later, two people entered the room. A man, who looked like a doctor, wearing a light green shirt, an apron, black pants and sneakers, with a stethoscope and a headlamp, and another person, dressed completely in black, with a mask on his face, looking like the people who were with me in the van, holding a tray with several surgical tools. The man dressed as a doctor then takes a stool, sits next to me, and begins to tell his story. He was a renowned surgeon who visited the forest a few meters from his garden in his free time. He admired the wild animals that lived there. One day, he was fired after several patients denounced him for performing procedures they didn't ask for. He lost his reputation, and in a rage he isolated himself in the forest for several days. Still fascinated with the animals, he decided that he wanted to become one of them. To get his wish fulfilled, he started selling everything he had. With the money from the sales, he got everything he needed to put his plan into practice. But there was still one thing missing, a guinea pig. After telling his story, he told me what he was going to do with me. My plan is to replace your body parts with jaguar parts while your parts will be placed on the woman in front of you. He told me in a very deep voice. It horrified me. 
I tried to move and scream for help, but nothing happened. Tears began to well up in my eyes as the surgeon grabbed a saw. When he was about to saw my arm, I woke up short of breath. I took my cell phone that I left charging on a bench next to my bed and I realized it was 9.30 in the morning. Remembering the deal I had made with my mother, I got up, changed clothes, had my breakfast quickly and left the house a little before 10 o'clock. I had no money to call an Uber and as the school was approximately two kilometers from my house, I decided to walk there. After 20 minutes of walking, I arrived at an intersection where I had two options. Either I continued on the street I was on for a few more meters and then I entered an alley that would lead to the street behind the school, or I turn onto the avenue and continue on it until I reached the school street. As I was in a hurry to get there, I decided to continue down the street to the alley, which was the fastest way. It wasn't a busy street, so I was walking on it alone. As I approached the alley, I stopped in shock. There was a yellow van parked just down the alley, just like the one in my dream. Instantly, I remembered everything that had happened in my dream and I froze in horror. My heart started beating so hard it felt like it was going to leave my body. My hands started to tremble and I started to lose my breath. Then, with all the adrenaline coursing through my body, I turned around and ran, desperate until I reached the avenue. I continued running very fast until I reached the school. I knocked on the door so hard and when they opened, I ran towards the bathroom and locked myself in there, almost throwing up. My mother and other employees came desperately and knocked on the bathroom door, asking if I was there and what had happened. I came out of the bathroom and said I had something to tell my mom. She led me into an empty classroom, gave me a glass of sugar water, and after I managed to calm down, I told my mother about my dream and the van I had seen. She was worried about me, but at the same time, she didn't believe me. We live in a very safe neighborhood, Leo. There's almost no crime around here. You are overreacting to this she told me in a calm voice, and left the room after her coworker asked if she could help him. I stayed in that room for a few minutes, alone, thinking about everything that had happened, until I decided to start helping with the event. After everything was ready, my mother took me out to eat, and then to an ice cream shop. To this day, I never had a dream like that again, and I never saw that yellow van again. But I keep wondering if something would have happened to me if I hadn't turned around and run away. Would I be alive to tell this story?